Hey guys, RPG Rider here. I played uh, Palladium Fantasy First Edition last night and the night before. I uh, ran it for uh, a couple guys the first night and one guy the second night. Uh, just the other guys uh, couldn't show up for whatever reason. And um, I had a blast. I had a really good time. It was excellent. And um, now I can't comment. Okay, so there are quite a few things to discuss in this vlog. <clears throat> One of which is how the basic palladium system kind of works. So, um, uh, basically, what you've got. Sorry, I just have to get out of here. Okay, so you've got a pile of attributes in Palladium. I think there are eight. And you roll a 3d6 for each one of them. So... So you've got... Um, it's going to be difficult, guys, with the book in front of me, but I'm going to try it. So you've got a few. You've got, like, a... Uh, PE, which is uh, physical endurance, and you've got PB, which is physical beauty, and PS, which is physical strength, and you've got ME, which is mental endurance, MA, mental affinity, which is kind of like your charisma, I guess, and mental endurance, I guess, is kind of like your wisdom score if you're a D&D player. And uh, you've also got speed. Uh, and you've got your PP, which is your physical prowess, your dexterity. And you've got speed, but actually, strangely enough, and I found this a bit unusual, speed is not a derived attribute, right? It's not based on your dexterity, your PP. Uh, you know, I've got to roll my PP. It's, it, it's a rolled attribute, so you roll a 3d6 for your speed as well. So what I did last night and the night before, or the night before, to get people to actually roll these characters, what is I, I did is I got them to roll uh, 3d6 and then arrange as desired. And they've got an exploding die too in your, uh, when you're creating a character. And what I mean, oh, what I mean by an exploding die is that you, um, if you roll a 16 or higher on the 3d6, you get to roll an additional 3d6 and add that to your total. So I guess, you know, if you rolled an 18 and you rolled another 6, you know, you could have a 24, I guess, some one of your attributes. <clears throat> I'm not sure what the maximum is. And you've got quite a few races to choose from in Palladium Fantasy as well. And some of them are a bit different, and even the monster ones are a bit different from what you'd expect, right? So the kobolds... Uh, this is going to be a bit random, but uh, the kobolds are this weird... Um, I don't really know what to call them. They're kind of like... Look like chubby little gargoyles without wings, maybe? Uh, just a very unusual looking creature. Uh, and the... Uh, see, what are some of the other ones? There's a wolfen uh, race, and they kind of look like gnolls, but they, they're nothing like gnolls at all. They're kind of like the Roman Empire. <clears throat> and they're very honorable and justice is foremost in their mind, but they hate humans. So it's kind of like running, I don't know, a Klingon from Next Generation, maybe? Something like that. Only more Roman, a Romulan Klingon. I don't know. So when you get the attributes and um, you're all set to go that way, then you uh, have starting equipment listed on your page for what you get. So you might get like, you know, an old, I don't know, leather suit of armor, a pot, some gold, whatever. And then you choose your OCC. Now OCC in Palladium is your occupational character class. So it's your class, right? Fighter, whatever. 
But the cool thing about Palladium Fantasy First Edition is that when you choose your OCC, you've got a lot to choose from. So you're not just a fighter, you know, okay, I'm a guy with a sort of a fighter. You're a man-at-arms OCC, and there are a whole pile of them. So you can be a mercenary, a soldier, a longbowman, um, and the list kind of goes on and on. And then if you're a mage, you're not just a magic user or a cleric or an illusionist. There's a lot to choose from, guys. You can be like a... Um, a wizard, a summoner, a diabolist, um, you can be a priest of whatever you can be, and this is what I found really, really cool in the game. You can be a warlock, you can be a witch, you can actually be a witch, right? There's a witch OCC. And so you got a, quite a bit of variety in your uh, character class that you can choose. And, you know, they're all pretty different in a lot of ways. And then you've got an exp a, um, a chart that you look at to see what your pluses are. So at first level, you might have a plus two to dodge if you're a thief or an assassin. And at first level, you know, you might have plus one to something else. And the weapons give you different bonuses too, right? So if you have a ball and chain, I think that gives you a plus one to strike, right? Anyway, so you have to look at your weaponry too. Uh, and there's a lot going on with that, with your weaponry, right? So there's a lot going on, guys. There's a lot you can do, um, which I found really neat. Now, the other cool thing about Palladium Fantasy 1st Edition, it was produced, I believe, in 1983. One of the things I really liked about it, and added a lot of charm for me, and it did for the other, some of the other players as well, is the fact that you have um, a disclaimer at the front, and I just love this. The disclaimer says, you know, all of us at Palladium Books uh, condone, you know, the occult and the use of it, right? And you're thinking like, oh, well, okay, that's good. Uh, you know, they condone the occult. But you, they needed that disclaimer, guys, because when you look through the book, I mean, the whole bloody thing is the occult. You know, and I'm not saying that in a negative way. I mean, we've uh, culturally... We're not that way anymore. You know, the Satan craze has passed. Satan worshippers under your bed and in the forest. That's passed, right? But, okay, I learned my lesson before. <clears throat> Maybe I'll turn it off for a second here. So what they did is they had the, uh, you know, this claimer in the front. Because when you go through it, I mean, there's so much, you know, stuff that's quote-unquote occultish in there. You've got uh, rituals, you've got uh, power words and seagulls and runes and different types of power circles. And you've got demons and devils. And uh, get this, guys, this is one of my favorite things about Palladium Fantasy First Edition. Are you ready for this? Here we go. Satan is statted out. How cool is that? So if you ever want to worship Satan or battle him, you can do it in Palladium Fantasy First Edition. I just love it. And uh, anyone to guess? Can anyone guess how many hit points Satan has in Palladium Fantasy? I'll give you a second here. Can you guess it? Satan in Palladium Fantasy, how many hit points would he have? Are you ready for this? 666, of course. How could it How could it not be, right? So anyway, you've got uh, Satan statted. You've got loads of stuff. You can be a witch, you can be a warlock, you can do whatever. Now, the other thing about Palladium Fantasy is this. Um, you've got hit points, but there's something called SDC that you don't have. This, this is something that came in Palladium 2nd Edition Fantasy. Uh, they have a system whereby you have SDC, but you don't have any of that, so I won't enter that into the conversation. So, But there is SDC, it's structural damage capacity, and that's for things. So once again, if you want to beat up a chair, that's SDC, right? So your armor is a thing too, right? 
uh, so your armor is SDC. And the cool thing about palladium is that not only is it very lethal, it's very lethal. So here are your hit points, your starting hit points, right? It's your 3d6 roll for your physical endurance, your PE, and then you add a d6 to that. So really your hit points are 4d6, but guys, you need them. You need those hit points. So here's how combat works. And this, it took a while for me to get my mind wrapped around it. Anything above a five, no, anything above a four is a hit. So if you're going against someone in combat and you roll a d20 and you roll a five, that's a hit. Now, but there's more to it. So what happens is armor has an armor rating, and that's how well it protects you. So let's say if you had leather armor on, I think that armor rating is an 8. So if you get an 8 or above, you've actually bypassed the armor rating. You've slipped the sword in underneath the arm or wherever, in the armpit, what have you, and you've damaged the person. But if you don't get above the AR, but you do get above the 4, so you hit them in the five, six, seven, whatever. You hit them, but you didn't get over the AR of eight. Let's say you rolled a six, which is above a five, but not uh, an eight or higher. You damage the armor. So all of your damage damages the armor, which is really cool. So in other words, people can lose their hit point, their SDC, their hit points off their armor and lose their armor throughout the adventure. You know, their armor slowly gets cut to ribbons. And then there are rules on mending armor and how much it costs and professional services if you go into a town, all that stuff. Now the other thing is, Palladium Fantasy really, fighting is for the fighters. You know, you can fight if you're not a fighter, but it helps to be a fighter in uh, Palladium Fantasy. It really does. Uh, so what happens is, if you're a man-at-arms OCC, right, and Thief is included in man-at-arms, you know, because they use, I guess, their fighting, you know, a lot, um, and the assassin, if you're a member of that, <clears throat> you get a free parry which is free. So every time someone tries to hit you uh, with a sword or whatever, you get a parry and it's free. So what happens if they, if they roll to hit, let's say you're using the ball and chain, your first level, you get a plus one to hit, you roll a 14 on a d20, that's a 15. They get a free roll on a d20 to try to get a 15 or higher and if they get a 15 or higher they've blocked it. They parried it with their weapon or whatever, right? And that, it's a very active system in that way, combat. But it had a lot of charm because if they get past your parry, you can be cut to ribbons pretty easily in Palladium. Like a battle axe does 2 to 12 points of damage, guys, right? It, Palladium Fantasy doth not mess around. It's a... Uh, you can be in a lot of trouble in combat and Palladium Fantasy pretty quickly. But if you're not a Man-in-Arms OCC, you don't get that free parry. You don't, right? So, you know, you can be in a trouble. If you're a priest or something like that, and there are a bunch of fighters, Man-in-Arms types coming at you, you're, you can be in a lot of trouble. Now, the other thing is there's a dodge and uh but that means you forfeit your action so if you forfeit your action totally you dodge out of the way you throw yourself flat whatever you need to do to get out of the way of uh you know a potential blow 